This is day six in my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the GCSE exams this year, Monday to Saturday, I'm posting a new video with a six mark question so that you can practice how to answer them. Today is the last part of our first week. You'll find a link in the description below to each of the questions from the six days this week and also a playlist containing all of the videos. Today's question comes from the forces topic from physics paper two. Before you answer this, just a couple of reminders. Firstly, even though you would probably be given a whole page of A4 to answer this question, it is not an essay question. You need to lay your answer out in a logical fashion that the examiner can follow, but there aren't any marks for full sentences or writing in paragraphs. Even when it comes to spelling, the only time that it's going to affect your mark is if you have a pair of words that are spelled so similarly that if you spell one of them wrong, it's not clear which one you mean. The other thing to watch out for is making sure that you are answering the full question. Often the exam board will give you some different areas that you need to cover in your answer. This time they haven't done that because one of the marks is for identifying what those areas are, but I'm sure that if you revise this topic thoroughly, you'll realise that there are two different parts to this question and you need to make sure you're covering both of them. If you haven't already, pause the video and give yourself six minutes for this six mark question. Before we write our model answer for this question, I want to draw your attention to the fact that the question specifically refers to stopping distance. And the reason that I'm emphasising this is that every time this topic comes up, there are always candidates who answer in terms of the amount of time it takes for the vehicle to stop, or even the amount of force that it takes to stop the vehicle. And while those things are important, and while they may form part of your answer, they don't fully answer the question, which is about stopping distance. So just be really careful with that. Now, as I alluded to, there are two components to stopping distance. So I'm going to start my answer by explicitly saying that stopping distance is made up of a thinking distance. So the distance traveled by the vehicle in that time in between me deciding that I need to brake and the braking force actually being applied. And then also the braking distance, which is how far that vehicle goes while you're braking. And by putting the abbreviations TD and BD after them, what I've basically done is made sure that my examiner knows that's what I mean, and therefore I can answer the rest of my question without having to write those words out in full and just save myself a little bit of time. There are certain things that will affect just thinking distance and certain things that will affect just braking distance. And then there is one thing that will affect both of them. So that's where I'm going to start with the speed of the vehicle. If a vehicle is traveling at a higher speed, then even if the time taken remains the same, it will cover more ground. And so that's going to affect both thinking distance and braking distance. In terms of the thinking distance, you can think of the fact that even if your reaction time remained exactly the same, let's say it's 0.3 seconds, then if you're driving at 60 miles an hour, you're going to travel over twice as much distance as if you were traveling at 30 miles an hour within that same time. In addition, if you're traveling at a higher speed, you're going to have more kinetic energy. And so therefore more work needs to be done in order to dissipate that energy. And it's going to take more time for that process to happen. So that will also affect the braking distance and increase that. Anything that means that the vehicle takes a longer time to slow down will also mean that it takes a longer distance to slow down. So one thing here is the reaction time. If you have a slower reaction time, then the vehicle will travel further before the braking happens. But reaction time only affects thinking distance. Now, your reaction time could be increased by you having used drugs or alcohol, by you being very tired, or just by you being a bit distracted by what's going on around you. Finally, we can think about things which are going to increase the braking distance, but not the thinking distance. So in order for you to brake, there needs to be friction, both between the brakes and the wheels and also between the tyres and the roads. So anything that is going to reduce that friction is going to impact on the braking distance. So in terms of those roads, it could be because of the weather, but we want to be talking about it being wet or icy. It's not just enough to say the weather is bad. You need to actually specify how. It could be poor road surface or it could be poorly maintained tyres or also poorly maintained brakes. Any one of those is going to reduce the effect of the braking and therefore lead to an increased braking distance. The other thing we can think about is, again, going back to the idea of dissipating energy and the amount of force required. If the vehicle is heavier, 
then that's going to mean that it has more kinetic energy and therefore more work needs to be done to stop it and therefore the breaking distance will be greater. As we've said before, often for these six mark questions, you don't need to have put down everything that we've got on the slide. This would be one of these common questions that's in the foundation tier and the higher tier, so aimed at about a grade five, and there's some stuff here that we probably don't need to include. But what we do need to do is make sure that we have linked explanations. So this would be one of these level marked questions, and to get into that level three where you get five or six marks, we're going to want a number of different factors considered with some explanation of why or how they affect it. So to get five or six marks, I would expect that you would need to talk about the speed and something that affects the thinking distance and something that affects the braking distance. And then you also need to explain why they have an impact or give a bit more detail. So for the speed, including the bit about the vehicle traveling further in the same amount of time, um, for the thinking distance, probably giving some examples of things that would affect it um, and then saying that therefore the time is greater, so therefore the distance is greater. And then for the braking distance, thinking about those different examples and relating that back to this idea of reduced friction. That's it for week one of the GCC Science Six Mark Challenge. On Monday, we'll be back to biology with a question from biology paper one about the absorption of molecules into the bloodstream. Don't forget that all of the videos are kept together in one playlist so you can find them all really easily. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that you've enjoyed this week's Six Mark Challenges. I'll be back again on Monday and I hope to see you then. If you have found this useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC Science Revision videos coming soon.